What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in this box? What's in the box? What's up, model car mechanics? Have you ever been to a hobby shop and you saw a model car, but you really wanted to know what was inside the box before you bought it? Today I'm going to open up and show you what's inside the AMT 1978 Firestone Ford 4x4 pickup truck. And if you stick to the end of this video, I will show you a great model car tip that will make your models look magnificent! Now let's go down to the bench and see what's in the box. And now we wind the clock all the way back to 1978 as we visit our Ford dealership where we get to check out the amazing Firestone 4x4 pickup from AMT. This model kit is part of the Retro Deluxe series from round two and it includes two wheel drive parts, expanded decal sheet and vintage packaging. Custom crafted for the Firestone Superstone sweepstakes, the 1978 Ford is at home on the boulevard or in the boondocks. This heavy duty beauty is powered by a 460 V8 teamed with four wheel drive and features Firestone's rugged all-terrain TC tires. As you can see, here's a rear three quarter of the model and it is molded in 125th scale for modelers ages 10 through adulthood. On this side of the box, we can see more of the features like the roll bar with the driving lights, the Firestone shield bed cover decal, as well as the Firestone all-terrain tires mounted on plated spoke wheels and the heavy duty 4x4 drivetrain. And now let's open up the lid on the box and check out what's inside. The anticipation is just driving me crazy here. Right away we get to see our chrome features in the nice bag as well as our tires and then there's our cab in a separate bag as well as the rest of the white components. Here we have the glass and more of the undercarriage parts. We have a nice little flyer from 2013 from round two. So this model has been out on the market for a while. We got our business mail as well as the instruction sheet and our decal sheet inside, which we'll check out toward the end of the video. Here's our instruction sheet for our 1978 Firestone Ford 4x4 pickup. And as you can see, this is a faithful reproduction of the 1970s style instructions with the important read this first points up top and the tools that we're gonna use on our build, as well as our complete parts layout, which is always handy. Panel one shows our amazing Ford 460 V8 cubic inch engine. And this one is a really nice engine because as you can see, you have right and left hand side engine block and right and left hand side transmission, which glue together as separate components. We have our oil pan down underneath. There's our front cover with the separate water pump. And here we have our steering pump going onto our belts and pulley assembly, as well as our alternator and our fan up front. We've got the distributor, the intake manifold, the carburetor, the air cleaner, upper radiator hose, starter motor, and then our cylinder heads, exhaust manifolds, and our valve covers going up top. So again, you get a totally complete motor with this kit. As stated on the box, our 1978 Ford truck can be built as a two-wheel drive or four-wheel drive. So in our first panel, we're going to take a look at our two-wheel drive. Here you've got your front cross members going in, as well as these radius rods. There's our tie rod, and then we've got more of these supports. There's our front discs, and we get the exhausts here, which is really nice. A full perimeter frame and a drive shaft going back to the rear, as well as a cab cross mount. Again, you can see the many parts and just how great this model kit is. Here's the rear suspension for our two-wheel drive option. You got two leaf springs going in the back, a differential with an upper and lower half that you glue together to make one piece, two rear shocks, a rear cross member, and a two-piece fuel tank. For the optional four-wheel drive, you get a differential up front with the tie rod and an anti-sway bar, as well as our front drive shaft. Here's our transmission four-wheel drive cross member components. And then this is how our wheels go together with a backing plate, a tire, and a wheel up front. And again, you also get the exhaust pipes and the radius rods. And here's everything going together in this illustration there. And here is our rear four-wheel drive suspension, which is basically a copy of the two-wheel drive. There's our brace across the back, going onto the frame with our two shocks, the upper and lower rear drive shaft, as well as our two leaf springs and the two-piece fuel tank once again. 
These two panels show our interior, which is quite simplified. You have a tub style again, which is popular back in this era, a bench seat that drops in from the top, a steering wheel with a column on it, and a dashboard, and our ever-present CB radio, which was one of the greatest things of the 70s. Down below we have our body. So we've got a separate hood. We've got our body as well. We've got these two nice hood hinges, a radiator shroud, a battery, the front grille, and then our windshield and our back cab window, as well as the two side mirrors. And then our interior just pops up from underneath. In our final assemblies, we have the cab being dropped into place. There's our roll bar with the optional lights up top, as well as two braces. We have our box lid cover and our CB antenna, and a nice paint chart right here. And if we just move the instructions down, we can see the rest of the assemblies to right there. There's our pickup bed going together, and as you can see, it is multi-piece with outer and inner panels. And then we have all these braces underneath as well as the overrider grill guard, our front bumper, rear taillights, rear bumper going in. All of this drops down onto our frame, and then our wheels and axles go through the holes with this metal bar. Now, how does the plastic components measure up to our instruction sheet? Well, let's take a look at our cab for starters. And as you can see, there are some really nice windshield wipers molded in place, as well as little vents on our grill. Inside, it's quite smooth on those inner fender aprons. There is a little bit of detail back here on the firewall. You don't have a radiator in here. It's quite smooth, but you have an impression that there's a radiator in there. There's the door handles as well as a button and a very small emblem right there. You got a bit of your chrome trim going on, which is quite nice. And the ribs at the back, again, very well done. There are some simplistic elements to this, but Overall, it does look good from the outside. You've got some very high mold marks, which will need to be removed, especially around where the windshield is. You don't want that to uh, interfere with the fit of your glass. But overall, it is not a bad looking cab, and we'll get the job done quite nicely. Our next parts tree is beautifully molded. However, there is quite a lot of flash on it, as you can see. We have our hood, our front bench seat, there's our dashboard, wheel backs, and a bunch of the braces and our fuel cell. So let's just take this up into the camera. There you can see just how well detailed this dashboard is. Looks like a real 1978 Ford truck. There again is a nice upholstery on the bench seat. Now we'll just turn the hood over. It's smooth underneath. There is a key here to cut out for a blower option, which is not included in this kit, but does look quite exciting anyway. There's all our wheel backs. Again, very simply molded. A bunch of mold marks we'll have to deal with, but overall, it's not that bad. Now where this truck really shines is in that four-wheel drive setup and our suspension in general. And as you can see, we've got the wonderful rear differential, leaf springs, all those radius rods and supports, as well as our disc brakes, and there's the exhaust system, CB radio, the CB itself, our steering wheel, and everything you need. Again, flash does seem to be an issue with this kit, so just be careful, especially around stuff like the antenna, that you don't snap it by getting rid of the flash. Again, very excellently done, but has that air of simplicity as well. Again, mold marks are an issue, but if you can clean it up and take your time, this will work out very well. These components allow you to build the four-wheel drive setup, so we have the different radius rods. We also have the offset front differential, our transfer case, and the suspension components. There's our springs, which is universal to both. But again, very nicely done, but with that little side of simplicity. As I bring it up into the camera, you can see the nice molding on here. This parts tree is not really suffering from flash like the other ones. And again, very nicely done. Here we have a panel showing our off-road accessories. There's our tonneau cover, as well as the roll bar with our fog lights up top. And there's the front push bar and our mirrors and the rods used for the back of our roll bar. Again, very simply done. There are some nice stretch marks on the canvas there, which is uh, very well. We do have some sink holes in here that we'd have to fill in. But overall, as you can see, this kit is very simple. 
And here we have our perimeter frame. And as you can see, this is quite a long frame. It's also very nicely molded, but there are quite a lot of mold marks again, and we have that flash issue. But overall, this is very nice. These components up front, you actually have to saw them out and remove them. But there are some cross braces, as we will see, that will fill in that area. Here we have our cab side panels. We've got our inner wheel arches, as well as the outer for our truck bed. Again, you can see how just how nice this is. Looks like a door panel almost molded into that side. Here we have our dual fuel tanks. So I guess this is sort of a storage drawer. And then that would be the storage area on this side. Again, very nicely done, but suffers from the mold marks and the high flash, which seems to be pretty common to this kit. This parts tree showcases our interior bucket, as well as the floor for our pickup bed. And if I just turn this over, you can see that we have the automatic pedal in here, as well as the regular gas pedal. And it has the parking brake pedal molded into the floor. The side detail is quite nice with our door handle and armrest. And for a tub of this vintage, it is actually really good. There are no mold marks on the floor. Oh, I lied. There's one there and one there and one underneath the seat. But overall, shouldn't be too hard to get it. As for the floor, it is very nicely done with the proper ribs in the proper places. Here we have two parts trees. This, of course, is the rear tailgate and that front panel, as well as the braces for our floor for our truck bed. And down here we have the big Ford 460 cubic inch engine. So I'll just move this one out of the way, and we can study up on that engine. Just look how great this is. Very nicely done. This could be used in other kits if you don't want to use it in the truck. Detail level is very high. Some mold marks again and flash, which we can easily get rid of, with hobby files, a bit of putty, and our number 16 hobby blade. Our chrome parts tree is, again, quite wonderful. Here you get your full Ford grille, which was quite a big piece back in the day. Now the headlights you will have to paint, as well as the taillights. And uh, something like Tamiya clear acrylics are really nice, as well as the tinted transparents, like a red. There's our wonderful spoked wheels, as well as our bumpers front and rear, and the alternator and our mirror inserts. Again, the detail on here is quite nice. Would be nice if you could actually just grind this out a bit and let the uh, grill show through, if you know what I mean. Again, look at those nice square headlights. Square headlights were really quite popular back in the day. Sort of were introduced more around the later end of the 70s than the earlier part. You can see the mold marks underneath. The chrome on this is not really the best plated, as we can see some yellow, and I do hope that your example is actually quite better. Here we have our clear glass components. Again, flash, but there's our windshield and our back window, and these always have these funny little mold dots right on them, so hopefully they will be uh, lost when you glue them up underneath into that molding. But overall, I mean, it's not bad. It is what it is. Here we have our very nicely done Firestone All-Terrain TC tires. These are excellent because the lettering sticks up quite high. And on the sidewall, you also get the nice pie crust edge to it, sort of like an apple pie. And then here we have our wonderful tread underneath. So again, very nicely done. There is no webbing in between the tires that you have to worry about cutting out. So very nice. And now the moment you've been waiting for, what do the decals look like? So let's just fold up our paper and see. There we have it. Our nice red flames, as well as the big Firestone emblem, which goes on that tonneau cover. There's our Super Stones decal, which will go on the side, as well as the Firestone visor decal. And we have Ohio license plates C1964Z. So before we go on in this video, how many of you have built this truck, and what was your building impression of it? Did you like it, or did you find it troublesome, especially with all the flash and the mold marks? Let us know down in the comments below. I hope you found this video very helpful for your next model car purchase. Now, as promised, this video right here will show you a really cool technique that you can apply to your model cars. 
And if you want to see what model cars that you can buy from me today, check out this link right down here. Well, I really hope you enjoyed that video and we'll see you on the next one.